My name is Caitlin Blosky. Um, I'm currently a senior here at North Dakota State University. I'm double majoring in social work, human development, and family science with a minor in psychology. I have a heart for helping other people and every other major when I came into here, it just didn't seem right. Um, but going to that first social work class, it just clicked because um, I want to help people for the rest of my life. I'm a part of an organization, a school actually, um, and so I spend a lot of my time with the friends. Um, we'll have parties, we'll have bonfires, um, I study with them a lot, I'll have just game nights with them. All of them actually live in my building too, and so I usually just go hang out with them. So I spend a lot of my time with those guys. I don't know, I'm just a person who loves loving other people, <laughs> making them feel seen and known and cared for, and someone who also just, yeah, wants to make a difference. High school was hard. Um, I wasn't really popular. I wasn't not popular. I was just kind of like that awkward middle stage. But it was just kind of an awkward time. I was so full of anxiety in high school, which is where I got to the point of I couldn't even like go out and meet with someone or like get coffee with someone to the point where like I would shake. Um, and it would get to the point where like I'd vomit and have to cancel them. So I didn't really have a social life and I was really struggling with depression and anxiety and pornography without it knowing what it was was something that I had kind of ran to to like made, make myself feel more comfortable and feel safe in the moment but afterward my goodness like the shame that like spiraled around me and like um, just the sadness and like the anxiety just grew. I feel like shame is just being so held down and so like tied up by what you're dealing with that you feel like you really can't talk to anyone else or having that fear of if I share this with someone they're gonna think less of me and they're gonna not want to um, be around me anymore and that's what is so sad about shame is that when you're really struggling with it you can't tell anyone. Which looking back now I really wish I would have told someone right away especially because I feel like that could have saved me a lot of heartbreak instead of you know, three months of just sitting in my room, becoming more and more depressed to the point of like wanting to, you know, die by suicide um, because of it. Um, and I was like, I feel like if I tell my parents, I'm going to get in trouble, which I know that probably wouldn't be true now. But I was in the moment, I was like, man, if I tell my parents, I'm going to get in trouble. I was thinking all these things, you know, downstairs in my room while my parents were upstairs, my brother's like across the hall. Um, and I'm like fighting these thoughts at myself of like, how do I, how do I kill myself with, you know, them not knowing. When viewing pornography, I just, I feel like a different person. I don't feel like myself. And that's not a way anyone deserves to live. A big thing is if you're trying to do it alone, at least for me, I failed every single time I've tried fighting it alone. You need people to fight beside you. And so I found people that I can trust. Um, I've been very open with my story and so a lot of like my community knows about it but I have like um, really incredible friends and I love them because I told them and I never felt any shame I never felt um, like I was less than but they were there to be like okay how can we help you um, and even my roommates now I told them and they were like awesome um, how can we help you and so yeah people who are helping other people struggling with pornography first of all I would say they're human they're gonna mess up um, and that's okay but also be there to listen because sometimes they're gonna to need to just have someone to listen to them and listen to uh, what they're feeling. Um, and so just being available to them whenever they need you, which is a lot to ask, um, but you are gonna be a huge part of their story someday. Like even as I'm talking, I keep thinking of like those names <laughs> and they're gonna be just a huge part of my life forever now because of that. 